Good evening, virtual TIFF film goers, and welcome to the talk back following the fabulous documentary, Mama Gloria. I'm Sandy Klein, and I host the podcast, Sandy Klein's Conversations with Creative Women, and I am so proud to sponsor this film. I would love to introduce this evening's guests. I am going to begin with Mama Gloria. And guess what? I'm not going to say anything about you in the introduction because everything anybody needed to know about you, Gloria, was in that terrific film. Okay. You're good with that, I assume, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> I'd like you to meet Lucina Fisher. She began her, she is the director of Mama Gloria, and she began her career as a journalist. She's co-authored and ghostwritten several books, written and produced several national televised documentaries, and the critically acclaimed feature documentary Birthright, which, uh, a war story, which we showed at TIFF in 2017. And now she's back because she is the director of Mama Gloria. In the spirit of full disclosure, I had the presence of interviewing both Lucina and Mama Gloria for my podcast. I met um, Lucina in March and Gloria this past September. Also joining us is Shia Diamond. She is a talented powerhouse. She is a singer, a songwriter, a transgender activist. She was nominated for a GLAAD Media Award for Outstanding Music Artist. Her music, mainly soul, R&B, and she really is a rising star in the music world. Um, she uh, is no stranger to TIFF because um, her film was shown, I believe, was it uh, 2016? I wrote it down and now I can't seem to find it. Um, and it won the juried, um, it won Best Short, the Audience Award for Best Short and the Jury Award for Best Short. So. Lucina, Shia, Gloria, welcome and thanks for joining us all today. And let me just say again that we can, um, folks in the audience can write their comments or questions and we will share them with our guests. I'm going to begin with you, Lucina. How and why did you make this film? Mm. First of all, thank you, Sandy, for hosting. It's good to see you since we met uh, via your podcast and um, I just so enjoy talking with you. Um, so how did Gloria and I um, connect and why did I wanna make this film? Um, because when you meet Gloria, you know she has to be on screen. I mean, there's just no doubt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is a star. Uh, she is a powerhouse and um, and I just wanted the whole world to meet her. Um, I was fortunate that a very good friend of mine um, introduced us because Gloria was uh, looking to write her memoir. And as you said, I have been a ghost writer in a past life, um, but I just felt so strongly, especially once she and I met in person um, that I really, wanted to preserve Gloria's story on screen. I think people really just needed to experience her. Um, and, uh, and that's what you do with Mama Gloria. You just go into her world for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and, and, and particularly um, uh, what struck me about her story was that um, she had this great love uh, between her and her mom um, her mother was was there for her. She was supportive of her uh, way back in the 40s and 50s, uh, before the gay rights movement, before Stonewall, uh, before the word transgender even existed. And as a mother, a proud mother of a trans daughter, uh, that really resonated strongly with me. And I knew that was a message that just needed to get out to the world that we have to love and support our trans uh, family, our children, our brothers, our sisters, our aunties, our grandmothers, our friends, our coworkers, our community members. Um, we have to do that because um, that is what's gonna carry them through life as it has Gloria. And she has lived this magnificent life that 
I knew my daughter needed to, to know about and, and certainly the young generation of trans people. You know, I think your film, in addition to telling Gloria's story and you feel so connected to Gloria, but beyond that, it's a public service. You, pe people need to know this. People need to meet the Shias and the Glorias and, and, and all these barriers and stereotypes, you know, to be broken. What was it like for you, Gloria, to find yourself the topic of this film? Uh, it was exciting. And um, Lucina did such a wonderful job in producing it and seeing myself on film, I was excited because I get a chance to talk about my life and what I had to go through. And now the things has changed so much, you know, we didn't have it in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, even the 70s. Uh, so I had to experience being trans and being out there by myself. Right. But I had the support of my family. And that was just so wonderful for me because I had three major women in my life. My mother, number one. My grandmother, number two and my great aunt, number three. And these magnificent women, they, they were there for me. They protected me. And um, growing up in the house with um, a bunch of boys that was in the house, but it was some girls in the house and um, the girls were okay with me except for one, but I won't mention her name. <laughs> and um, we just, um, you know, just my mother, my grandmother, and my great aunt, we were just women that sat in the house, cooked, so, uh, we, and we just had a good old, well, in fact, and you all you connected, know. yes, and you all, and you obviously felt safe, which yes, leads, which leads me to you, Shia, because as you listen to Gloria talk about the support of most of her family members, you didn't experience that, did you? I did not. Um, so um, yeah, my experience was a little bit different. You know, I just. Um, um, but you see the um, amazing result of of what support does. And um, and so, you know, with Luciana and with Mama Gloria, you get a chance to see the love and, and, and we, that's what we're trying to um, get more people to do. But on, on my particular end, you know, I, my family didn't understand a very a religious background. And so, um, you know, people love differently. And so in their eyes, loving uh, me meant that they had to correct some things about me and not allow me to be my true authentic self. And so like Mama Gloria said that, um, you know, times were different as well. So now uh, people uh, get a chance to benefit on um, the sacrifices that we made by, by existing. Uh, Mama Gloria, um, we were fortunate enough to be in her presence um, just because of, um, we started talking about the founding mothers. Uh, we started talking about our ancestors. Then we have the, the, the privilege to be in front of uh, one of the, the mothers that made it possible for all of the Shias to be here, uh, for all of the trans women who um, get a chance to have an opportunity to thrive in their careers um, and, you know, and fight for the pursuit of love. It, it all started with, 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 with women like Mama Gloria. And so... Um, yeah, I think that the, the impact of this film just can't be understated. I wanna quote you some statistics that were just in the New York Times um, from November the 11th. 
more than a third of young people in foster care in New York City identify as LGBTQ, and a new report finds they are struggling to, to find the support they need. And those who identify as gay are more often placed in group homes or residential care and not in family-based homes. Isn't that something? Yeah, you're nodding your head, Lucina and Shia. I mean, isn't that just amazing? Yeah, a, a lot yeah. of people don't have the capacity to love beyond, beyond the gender spectrum. It, you know, um, I was in foster homes. So in a, and there were a lot of parents who just didn't, you know, they said, oh, it seems like a sweet child, but you know, they weren't, they didn't have the capacity to show love to a child that didn't exhibit, um, um, you know, the traits that a society says that you're supposed to exhibit um, by being male bodied. And so, um, the, you know, it, it's, it's a different experience. So when we have uh, people that are able to, um, to love beyond that, they deserve homes. We all deserve homes. We all deserve love. And I think that speaks to um, what, what needs to happen and importance of this film as well. Um, so what needs to happen um, for our children, because they are children. And so everybody needs to have um, the access to love, um, to having an, an authority figure who um, understands and respects who they are and guides them through life and not just saying that, hey, you are different and I'm gonna push you out to the world and you figure it out yourself. And so that's what we end up doing. So that's what tough love looks like when it's um, presented to a, a trans person. Right, mm -hmm. except that that's not what your daughter faced, Lucina, with you and your husband. Absolutely, and, and absolutely not. And, and, um, and like she has said, um, you know, parents have to be able to look beyond their own expectations of who their child should be. Um, you know, even if they are told this is your child and this is what they're supposed to be, um, and your child is trying to tell you otherwise, um, and, cons you know, consistently, persistently uh, is telling you that, um, then it, it, it really is your job as a parent to listen, um, to really listen and love your child not how you want to love them, but how they need to be loved. Right, right. Because that love really is foundational. Yes. And, um, and, and so you, you see often uh, what happens when you don't have that love and you are thrust out into that world um, and you're, 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 you're searching for it um, in the wrong places, you know, yeah. or... Yeah. Um, you know, you're, yes. you're, you're putting yourself in harm's way often. Um, you know, you just don't have those, um, that same protection that is, that's built up through the nurturing mm. of, of family love. And I, I think what's powerful about what Gloria does and, and uh, continues to do, you know, certainly did with the charm school, but she continues to do that even though the charm school um, is no longer, is that she took that love that she got from her family and she's passing that on um, to the chosen family um, that she has adopted, that she has brought into her life. And, um, and, and that is often, you know, what is beautiful about the LGBTQ community that often we do have to, find chosen family um, and they are beautiful and colorful and, you know, and, and yeah. wonderful. Um, yeah, it, it uh, you know, that is, that is also part of that mother's love. Gloria gives that, um, you know, that was what the charm school was about. It really wasn't about manners so much as it was about love, yeah. <laughs> just yes. giving love. Well, it was a natural act for you, Gloria, to do that, to reach out to these young people and yes. to give them what you, in spite of what you tell us and we saw in the film in terms of your relationship with your mother and your great aunt and your grandmother, there was still, you know, 
plenty of roads to hoe here, you know, where uh, it was very tough for you. And one of the questions that came into the chat was, how did your younger brothers deal with your change from George to Gloria? Oh, uh, that that's a good question. My brothers, um, some of them, they love me. And it was, I think, a few that didn't understand. And they were so shy about me. They didn't want me out and greeting them in front of their friends. Mm. And that, that sort of hurt me. And I went back to my mom and told her about it. And she told me, she said, baby, I'll take care of that. And she did. Um, there was no name calling in my mom's house about me. And um, I was the protector of all my brothers, you know. I would fight for them and cook for them and nurture them like my mother did. And um, they had their friends that would come around and uh, it was so, you know, difficult for me because I would leave and go into another room. And um, I remember one time, my brother Michael, he works at the post office and his friend came by because he left some money in the house and my mother was to give it to him. So I went to the door and here was this man there. And he said, who are you? I said, I'm Gloria, Michael's oldest sister. And he, he, I gave him this package and he told my brother the next day, man, your sister is awfully fine. <laughs> and I had to laugh about that. <laughs> I did. I, if my brother didn't say anything. He didn't, you know, degrade me or down me. He came home and told me, he said, his friend is in love with me. I said, oh, my goodness. He's got good but, taste. Is that what you yes, said? Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, I'm so glad that my mother, my great aunt, my grandmother, they put the love in my heart and in my mind. And I'm supposed to share that with everybody. And I try to do that. And I am so blessed to have parents like that. And I, I don't have any children. But you can best believe I love the babies. I love my kids. And I try to do everything for them if they need me, you know. So that's what it's all about. The love that my parents gave me, I share it with everybody. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty clear. Shia, you did not have that experience. I did not. Um, you know, um, it, it, it was, you know, I had to figure out things um, pretty early on. So um, I had to make some very uh, difficult uh, decisions um, that, you know, most teens don't have to make. And that's to um, either stay in the situation and... Um, in your home, you mean? Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or to leave. Um, because there, there, there was an overwhelming show of love, but it wasn't an overwhelming show of support. And I feel like being the child I was, that's exactly what I needed. I need that support as I tried to navigate who I was, you know. Um, and just like Lucia, uh, uh, Lucina said, you know, is that, um, you know, this child needs that and, you know, for their growth. And for me, um, here I was very early on reminding my parents like, hey, this is who I am. This is, um, you know, I'm a girl, you know, just in case you don't know, uh, you know, and um, 
And, you know, I had to, you know, live my truth in silence for a while. And then it, when I became 14, I just couldn't do it anymore. It was just like I had to be myself because I was, you know, trying to live for everybody else, trying to make everybody else happy. I knew people loved me. I didn't want to offend anybody. But at the same time, I felt like I was depriving myself. And so, um, so I, I was getting disciplined again for being you know, who I am. And in it, that was just like the last straw for me. And I said, you know what? I have to leave. I have to choose myself. And so, um, so I ran away and um, went into the foster care uh, system. And um, so I learned firsthand, you know, exactly what that meant. And that, you know, my mother, she wasn't the only one who couldn't understand it. It was other uh, foster parents, you know, who couldn't understand that. And so um, as a result, they couldn't take me into their home. Um, it wasn't until I found the right, um, you know, parent, a foster parent that was able to navigate me into my emancipation to where I could do what others weren't able to do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it taught me very own, you know, like, you know, like independent, but I had to learn things the hard way. And so, um, like mother, uh, uh, like mama Gloria did is she taught them more than just love. She taught them how to survive. And you didn't and have so that. You, you, I you, did not. you did this by your bootstraps and then it didn't, and it turned against you, didn't it? it oh, oh yeah. Are you, are you comfortable sharing I gave that it a, with us? I gave, I gave it a good college try mm -hmm. until, you know, I just started to say, want it, I wanted more. And so the world was telling me I couldn't I, I could assess these things because of who I was. But, um, but I felt like it just was unfair. And so it's unfair that I couldn't work a job that everybody else works, you know, and, you know, and make the money that they make. I couldn't have a start into working toward my family and my future. And so what I decided to do was, you know, I couldn't live in that existence anymore. I said, I said you know, um, you know I, I, if I change who I am, if I had the money in order to have the surgeries that I needed, I would be able to live a different life. I would be able to live a life that was more fair um, for the person that's, because society is built upon the norm. And so I would be able to be closer to the norm. And so I did something I would never, uh, do something so far out of character that nobody expected somebody as sweet as me that would do something as, as as far as a crime and so armed robbery but they didn't understand that I was acting under du 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 duress that you know I was I was dying I had tried to commit suicide so many times <laughs> you know and I wanted to live and so that was the only option I had and so I took it Committed so crime. you you yeah. and you were arrested at what age? Um, I I was uh, twenty years old. And you were so, thrown into the slammer. I was, uh, yeah. And so so basically, I think I was like like nineteen and a half ish or something because they they kept me in there until I turned uh, twenty one, so they could send me to prison. So I I was there. So wait, you were in a youth you were in a youth detention first? Yeah, they kept me in jail. They didn't even want to send me to the youth because they didn't want me to influence other youth. And like, so they uh, held me in jail until they were able to send me to prison. And where was the so, Shia? What state? In Michigan. Oh. Yeah. And, and so, um, so I went through the correctional system. And of course, um, you know, going through that system, not having support, uh, never having a visit for 10 years. Hmm. I just oh, realized that, you know, <clears throat> that I didn't have anything. And so I said, okay, you know, so it wasn't about embarrassing family anymore. It wasn't about, it was just about my survival and how could I survive this? Not knowing how to be a criminal because evidently I got it wrong because <laughs> I got caught. Because you so, were not a criminal. Because I'm not, not right. Were. And so, and so, so how do I survive um, around people who, who've known nothing but, but how to survive, you know? And, um, and so being thrown, you know, in, in this situation, and because of the the, the magnitude of my crime, um, I was um, not at like a low level security. So I started off right away at a, like a medium uh, security um, facility. Um, for men. For men, right. 
So here it was, um, I was reminded that I was not this female that I had had grown to be and that I had always seen myself as. And so I was always reminded, you know, the latter. And um, so, um, so that was torment. So not only did I have to do my time, but I had to be tormented for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Good and God. so, um, so that's when I kind of came into my own uh, hiatus of how do I heal myself? How do I forget about this world that discarded me and learn how to embrace myself even more? So I, I, you know, I took back the power that the correctional officers had because they didn't want me to be on the yard anyway. They wanted, you know, um, I was looked at it as a, as a threat to the good order of, of the facility. Oh, she froze. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. All right. We'll get, we'll get back to Shia. I had read about Shia that while she was incarcerated, that's where she found her voice and, and that's where the music came from. Absolutely. Um, Lucina, uh, one question, uh, is that once the, the question wants to know how old was your daughter when she came out as trans as a, it's, it's P flag, right? Uh, a mom, uh, for many years, I've seen families come to our support groups with their trans children at younger and younger ages. So share that with us. Right, right. So my daughter um, actually came out as trans at age 11. Um, but prior to that, um, I, I feel like all the signs were there. Um, we just, um, you know, weren't we were just really allowing her to lead um, and take us where she needed to go. So um, at age two, she was wearing my shoes, Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. not at all interested in her dad's shoes. Um, She put on my high heels and she walked in them perfectly. (laughs) And I knew like, okay, something is different here. And, um, and that continued, um, you know, for, um, the next couple of years. Um, and, and then we uh, started just sort of reaching out to see, um, realizing that this was probably not a phase, um, you know, what, what, if anything, we should be doing. Um, and, you know, there weren't other parents that we knew who had um, children uh, doing the same thing. So we did manage to find a support group um, for gender non-conforming boys. And, um, and we actually went to a camp when um, my daughter was five. And so she got to meet other boys like her. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then she kind of you know decided that um, she was in public going to present as a boy even though that was not how she felt and she would come home and, you know, change into her clothes and play with her toys and everything. And she did that until age 11, until um, it got to the place where she just couldn't keep living this dual um, life. This dual life absolutely. And keeping this great, great secret. Um, mm-hmm. Not even her closest friends knew um, that that is truly how she felt. And um and so, yeah, she she first let us know that she didn't think she could be a boy much longer. She sent a note. Uh, she put a note under our door. Um, and my husband and I read that and we were like, mm-hmm. OK, I guess this is where we're we're going. And um, we're going to do everything we can to, to make sure um, that uh, she's feeling supported. You know, like she has said, you know, we're going to give her what she needs to, to feel um, like her authentic self, like her outside matches truly mm-hmm. how she's always felt inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing for my podcast, a woman named Brianna Sinclair, who is an, you know her, uh, an opera singer in San Francisco. And uh, she is transgender. Uh, and her story is absolutely riveting. And she tells about growing up and her father kind of freaking out when she was playing with girly things growing up. And then at some point he just got so crazed about it and he, that he went out and he bought a belt that had raised studs in the belt. 
and he beat her with that belt because he said to her, I want there to be scars left on your body so that you know that this is just not acceptable at all. I mean, how do you, uh, and then, and then the heartening part of this is you meet a mama Gloria and you meet a Lucina Fisher and you say, thank God, thank goodness. And, and to get it from each perspective, you as a parent of a transgender child and Gloria, you going through all of this and having a support system. And I think that one of my takeaways from you, Gloria, and I, I think I said this to you when I interviewed you, you don't have a bitter bone in your body. And you just kept, kept saying, I feel blessed. Um, and as I also said, it shouldn't be Mama Gloria, it should be Saint Gloria. <laughs> yes, you did say that. I remember <laughs> that so well. And I, I want to tell she, um, I am so happy for her. She's amazing. Oh, she's just super amazing. And me coming up uh, in my household was always nice. And I was uh, a star to them already, you know, because I'd get up. And um, I put on my dad's nylon shirt. That's what they were wearing back then. And I put that on and I shimmy and dance around the house. <laughs> and they thought, oh, what is wrong with this child? But um, at eight years old, I was a boy. And at eight years old, George, which the name I use, but I told George, you got to leave me. You would know we got to divorce because I'm Gloria and you got to be gone, George. And he left and I haven't seen him or heard him or think about him because that was something that I've always wanted to be, uh, Gloria. And uh, I am so happy that my parents taught me how to love, how to give back and to help people, you know, if you can. And, but be careful, they told me about, because when you leave and go out in the outside world, it's going to be dangerous and it's going to be upsetting to you at times. And like she has said, I, at the age of 19, I drank some paint thinner to get rid of myself. Uh, that was the worst thing to do because I was in a hospital, the little company of Mary, I remember that. And I was on suicidal watch. A person had to sit in the room with me. And I said to myself, I will never do this again. And I learned from that, you know, we do more damage to ourselves than the outsiders, you know, because um, I didn't, want to be out there. And then when I, I started working, I wanted an apartment on my own. And I went to the real estate company to get an apartment. The man looked at me because I had to use my boy's name to get the apartment. And uh, they wouldn't rent to sissies in that day and age. <laughs> we couldn't get an apartment and um, it was horrible. Uh, we didn't have no resources that we could go to and find out how we can overcome this. But um, I waited a while. I had to go back and forth to my mom's house, which was 
a joy, but I wanted to be on my own out there. And um, it took a while for them to realize, you know, I pay my bills and you take my money. You're not taking uh, uh, homo's money for nothing. <laughs> so why don't you accept who I am and what I am? And I just couldn't deal with it. And then one of my sisters, she didn't want me to be a girl. She tried everything in our power, prayed on me, you know, and wrote nasty letters to me, but I forgave her and she's dead and gone, but I love her still, no matter what, you know, cause she had stopped speaking to me. <sighs> Wow. I wish I had one eighth of yeah her compassion. Doesn't that just blow you away, Lucina? I mean, it really does. And you know, I think because Gloria knows that you know ultimately those grudges just eat you up inside, and she's you know she's just got too much going on to like <laughs> stay in that space. Right. You know, she even today she is seventy five years old, and she is like making plans for the future like she has got like you know things she's doing and and <laughs> and plans when COVID is over she's you know got stuff she's gonna do and I just think that um is so resonant for me um you know I just uh want to be the same way you know live life fully and and just enjoy every moment of it you know, you can't look back, you know, no, uh, you, you got to just keep going forward. Uh, Gloria's taught me that. How old is your oh, daughter, Lucina? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How old is your daughter? Oh, you, you know, Gloria, you know. So oh. my daughter is now 17. And um, yeah, and she was 12 when, when she or 13 12 or 13 when she, she was actually um when she when she came out um to the community and public and and transitioned um she was just about to turn 13 so it's been four years yeah uh, do you mind sharing what you told me about what you and your husband did when you found out about your daughter transitioning what, what did i share <laughs> <laughs> oh you don't remember you did. I, I don't think I'm making this up, Lucina. Didn't you and your husband write a community-wide letter? We did. Come we on, did. man. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So, so what happened? Um, uh, she, you know, we went back and forth whether she was going to stay. Hi, she. Yes, back. she's connecting to audio. She's back. Good. <laughs> I just asked. She was mute. having some technical difficulties. Um, so yeah, we went, um, you know, with, with Gia, you know, we spent that year um, after she said to us, I don't think I can be a boy much longer. Then it was, you know, well, how is she going to make this transition in our small town uh, where she's gone to school with everybody since first grade? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, everybody knew her. So, you know, it was like, are we going to, you know, move to another place? <laughs> you know, And that was on the table at one sure. point, but she's got two younger brothers and, you know, they're connected here too. So, um, you know, ultimately she, she decided she, you know, recognized that she did have friends and that she wanted to, um, you know, be, you know, with her friends. She was just hoping they would accept her. Um, so we ended up, um, you know, basically telling everybody at the same time with a letter that we wrote to the entire middle school saying our daughter was transitioning. This was going to be her new name. We invited them to join us on this journey, wow. on her journey to support her because we had nothing to be ashamed of. She had nothing to be ashamed of. And, um, and you know what? It was, um, 
it was actually amazing <laughs> that uh, people responded with so much love and Isn't joy right? and mm-hmm. excitement because a, this was probably the most exciting thing that had happened in the small town in a while. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was the first to transition at her middle school. And um, she had uh, 12 of her friends who um, showed up the day before the first day of school um, to just uh, have lunch with her. And they were going to be her posse walking into the school the next day <laughs> with her back the best? Oh my God. <laughs> but, nice. but what I love the most is her her younger brother was starting sixth grade so he was starting middle school too you know I thought he was going to ride the bus that day he said oh no you you could drive me to school with Gia that's fine and I realized you know what He's going so he can walk into that school. Oh, God. (laughs) And that's exactly what he did. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. I'm so proud. You know, the whole family transitioned, you know, and and we've all been there for her and we we will continue to be. You know, Shia, when you hear this story and you when and you hear Mama Gloria's story, is it painful for you? It's not painful. It's actually what we're all, what, what we're doing this for. I think it's mm-hmm. why we all do what we do for. It's 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 not about our us. It's not about the change that we made. It's about us changing the world. And so um, when you look at um, parents that are 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 heading this on, and when you look at little brothers and sisters, you know, understanding the fundamental. Uh, uh, the fundamental uh, values of what brother and sisterhood really are, then we are doing our job all around us, everybody in their own right. And so, um, and it started with Mama Gloria. And so for, for, you know, like for us all to teach each other, you know, somebody had to lead the way. And um, yeah, it's, it's about our legends that have been leading the way. And we've never uh, paid enough homage um, to just their sacrifice and their commitment to that change, you know, to pass that on to us. And Mama Gloria may not have any children, but she has so many children in all of us. She sure and does. So, and so she gets to see the, 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 the fruit of her labor and to see that she did her part in changing the world and it's happening. And so a lot of people may not know to thank her, but I think this film gives them an opportunity to learn, you know, more of the icons like her right. and to be able to see that we have everything that we're doing is because of them. You got to own it's that, a, Gloria. You got to own yes. that, you know? Yes. I, that she is so amazing. And I'm so proud of her. <laughs> and Lucina is so amazing because she's got a daughter, trans girl, and the love that Gina put out there for her children. I admired her so much. She is amazing. She's doing a darn good job <laughs> of, of, of raising Gia. And Thank she's you. supportive of her. And uh, I have this vision, you know, uh, I don't want my trans girls and trans boys murdered out there by these ignorant, ignorant people, especially the man. The males are so egotistic and they they see us, they love us. And then when they come on to us, they're upset and tight about it. Because um, I tell them, guys who try to come on to me, First, I'm old as black pepper. <laughs> Secondly. <laughs> but that just gets better with age, doesn't it? Yes. That's, that's <laughs> what, and uh, secondly, I tell them, 
you can't do a thing for me. You know, I take care of myself and I really love myself. You got to learn yourself, love yourself to know it because um, we out in a cruel world. It is so many people out here that hate women like us. Mm -hmm. But these guys who murdered trans women, they're nothing but cowards. Mm -hmm. And uh, your ego, evidently, she probably didn't come on to him. And then he invites himself to the trans woman. And then after he get what he wants, he kills them. And I think that is such a horrible thing to do. But these men, they got an answer to a higher power because um, they out here talking about Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. And um, they, Black Lives Unity, they need to stop and talk to these men with guns and knives and killing up themselves and the small children, you know. And it's a shame that a mother walks around in her womb, have a baby boy, a baby girl. She don't know what they're gonna be like when they get up some age. And then they find out she's gay or trans, they kick them out. They really kick them out. And they do this because of their boyfriends is in the house with them. And they are afraid of the boyfriend doing some harm to the kid. And they toss them into the street for somebody else to misuse them. And they don't know. They don't know what love is. You know, again, Lucina, the film, which should be viewing for everybody, and, and Shia's story, and your story, and Mama Gloria's story, is heartening, and it's just so damn important. And when these statistics did, did yesterday, um, I did not know this, and I just read it was uh, the Transgender Day of Remembrance. I was yeah. unaware of that. Now, somebody yeah. just typed in the chat that this year so far there are forty homicides of um, uh, transgender men and women. Uh, this, this, what I had read said thirty. What difference does it make? But it's the deadliest year on record so far for transgender yes. murders. Yes. How yes. does not blow yes. your minds, women? Yeah, no, it totally does. And and um, you know, I think um, we we do have to uh, look at the causes of this violence. We've got to, you know. Um, Certainly the last four years, hate crimes have increased. We know that um, the discrimination from the administration, that the attacks on trans people, all of that has an impact on, you know, how others perceive transgender people. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like 80% of, of, of Americans don't know a trans person or don't think they know a trans person. Mm. So they're learning, they're getting their information, often misinformation from mm. other people or the media or, you know, and, and so for me, it was really important to put a different narrative out there um, to, 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 share Gloria's story at a time when I feel the community needs, um, you know, to have those sheroes, to have <laughs> some hope and um, some sense of optimism and, you know, to, to sort of look beyond um, just the, the narrative of violence and trauma, that we are more than just that, you right. know, to, to celebrate the joy within the community. 
And um, I love um, that she uh, saw this and, um, and, and she brought all of her love and craft and creativity um, to this by, you know, creating this amazing song that I feel is, is really, you know, yes, it's this gorgeous tribute to Gloria, you know, and the fact that she paved the way, that she made the way for, um, for, for Shia, for others, for Gia, for my daughter today. Um, but it really also is this beautiful anthem for our community, for the, for the trans community. And, and I think especially for black trans women and that it, it's so powerful. It really is, you know, you're not just standing up for Gloria, you're standing up for yourselves. Right. And, and that, oh, that message is what we need right now. Right. I, yeah. Just, I mean, I, yeah, I want to hear Shia like, yeah, for you, what was it like <laughs> creating this song? You know, right, that she wrote, song. that she sang, I think I said in the beginning, I hope I did, that she, the presence <laughs> of a legend was performed by Shia and written by you also, Shia, right? Yes. And in that, in that vein, I had, when you went before your, you froze, I had read about you that you found your voice when, while you were incarcerated and talk about how you are sharing this through your music. Well, I, I was able to um, just really understand that a lot of people didn't hear me. And so like, you know, I went through a lifetime of people not hearing me. Um, when I said who I was, you know, uh, people tried to tell me who I was. And so um, I, when, when, I, when I got and I started writing songs for the first time, so I writing down my thoughts about my experience, about um, how others treat, treated me um, and, you know, who I was and who I wanted to be. Um, that's when I really found my voice. So I was locked up in a man's institution when I realized who I was and who I realized what I wanted to do and how I wanted to, you know, to do it. And um, so uh, the first song I had wrote was I Am Her, um, just to talk about, you know, the defiance of uh, the struggle between me self-identifying and other people trying to demand I own another experience that wasn't my own. And so um, I found power in that. And so then I knew I not only wanted to do music because it was always in my heart to do music. But then when I realized that I could send a message through the music, I could actually communicate with people on the level that they could actually hear and receive. Mm -hmm. um, Cause sometimes, you know, um, words get lost in, trans in translation. Sometimes you say something a little too aggressive and somebody may not receive it because they feel like you're yelling at them. Hmm. or talking at them until they don't hear anything from the message. But through music, you can say what it is. You can tell this story. And, and for so often it's been that untold story um, that so many people, um, they can sing about every other experience, but they can't sing about our own experience. Right. And so I realized that was the lane that I was creating for myself as a lane that nobody else had the gauze to, to, to walk down. So it was some shoes that I wore that other people could not wear, especially when they're walking down the paved, it, it's the, the paved road that somebody else had laid down for, for them. And you already know there is a treatment to every word that somebody calls us. And so when somebody calls you trans, then it's a treatment that comes with that. And we all know what the treatment is. Mm. And so um, speaking a little bit about the, but just like the all lives matter, we can't say that all lives, ma all lives matter yet because we have not accepted that trans lives matter. We have, have not accepted that black lives matter yet. And so that's the only reason why we say that black lives matter and trans lives matter because nobody else is going to say it. Nobody else has the strength, the power or the courage to say these things out loud. When we start talking about um, Lucina's um, daughter and her little brother 
and how he stood there. So many brothers, even older, will not stand with their trans sister. And so we can't say that all lives matter yet until we can prove that they hmm. do. Wow. And so it shouldn't be this thing to what we said as a statement like, you know, like, duh, all lives matter because everybody still doesn't get it yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and we'll keep on pouring that into their brains until they can say it themselves and they can start showing it that, you know, all lives matter. When you can start showing it, improving it, then the world can start saying it. But when there's one person that is marginalized that does not experience it, then we can't say it yet. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people don't understand the magnitude the words hold po have power. And so we have to be careful of the things that we're saying when we're saying that, you know, that everybody matters because everybody doesn't matter yet. You know, the reason why so many uh, trans women are being killed is because of shame. Because we have not dissected what it means to be trans. And right now, trans is just this thing that we're supposed to ultracize and we're supposed to demonize. We've been taught that. And so until we can change that narrative and says that, hey, there is no shame in being and loving a trans woman. Because a person is so afraid that someone would find out that they've laid with a trans woman, they would rather kill them. And because society is so fixated on the trans experience being erased, that they would allow the trans person to be killed without investigating with the same energy they would any other red-blooded American. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot yet say that you know, it matters to us. It matters to people who are good and people who love like Mama Gloria, but it does not matter to the whole world yet. And that's why it's so much pushback. If something was a given and it was a truth, it was common knowledge, there wouldn't be no pushback because somebody would say right. it was factual. Everybody would say it's factual. There would be no argument. But anytime there's an argument when you're saying that Black lives matter or trans lives matter, that means that some people are still in disagreements about their lives. We wouldn't have to keep continuously fight for our, for, for our rights and fight for our lives at the same time that somebody will say, okay, let's give them a break because their lives matter. I, so, so in the music, I was able to push something from Mama Gloria's, just like what she br brings into the world. She's a legend. And so not only should you stand up, physically stand up, but you should stand up for women like her. So the stand up has like this double meaning and so we don't stand up for, we won't stand up when we see a trans woman walking on a stage. It's hard for us. And we won't stand run, up when she's Are you gonna run beat. for office? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> yeah, hello, I mean, did have you ever, <laughs> have you ever thought about that? I mean, you've got my vote. <laughs> she's got mine too. I bet, I bet. <laughs> Um, I have a few more questions and then we'll, you know, although this conversation could probably go on for days because you're the three greatest women sitting here. Uh, oh my goodness. I wanted to ask you though, Shia, before I forgot, did you mend your relationship with your family? I did. It, it, it took, it took over 20 years, but it's possible, baby. That's why we are here. And that's why we tell our stories. I'm not telling my story to make anyone feel bad. To, 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 to resurface these things that happened years ago. Right, and, and to feel ago. sorry for you. That, that is right, or to feel do. sorry for me. Right. It's to, to, to show that it's possible that regardless of everything I went through, look at me now. Yeah. Regardless of what happened in the past to those relationships, look at them now. And so when trans people want to give up, like I gave up and wanted to kill myself, they can realize you won't know what tomorrow will bring unless you stick around for it. <laughs> true. Wow. wow. Yeah, oh my so gosh. Show me <laughs> truth tonight, right? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, yes. I have a question for you, um, Gloria. Uh, a question that I live in Chicago. How can I help you and your good works? Oh, that. That is amazing. Uh, 
Uh, you can email me. Uh, can I give out the email? Sure. Do okay. you want? Yeah, yeah, you could do yeah. that. Or you, All right. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Go. Is she? Is that, you, are you okay with can, that? Can we get? Or a do you want to do it through the set up film? For her. Yes, I, up, we, set up for her, find out what's available. And um, like, how long would it take to set her up a, a cash app right quick? Well, she's got a PayPal account. She's gonna, so, okay. yes, yes. So okay. um, if people want to reach us through the film, just email us through the film. We'll get you that, that account so you can um, help out Mama Gloria. Because yes, you saw in the film, she is living month to month, so... Um, yeah. you would yeah. appreciate the help. I, I don't want to speak for you, Gloria, but I imagine you, you, you won't <laughs> well, mind. I would appreciate it, you know, because it's so much that I still want to do for my children, you know. Uh, like the other day, I saw a couple, I don't know what they were, they were standing out trying to get money the a girl was pregnant and uh, i'm walking out of the store and uh she said oh i'm pregnant i looked at her then i had to think i looked at her i said well I, it's not my fault that you're pregnant you know you need to share some love with your child you know, don't stand out here begging. You know, you got resources that you can go to. You're a young girl. There's so many places she can go and get help. But no, she had the boyfriend with her. And uh, he was a sight to see, but they were hand in hand. So, I gave her $5, you know, to do what she wanted to do. I told her, get some food and take care of your child in the stomach. She thanked me and I'm grateful to do that, you know, because um, life can be beautiful if you make it beautiful. But a lot of people, they just don't get it. And trans girls being murdered at an alarming rate, they shouldn't do that. These guys that do that, they're nothing but cowards. And they need to stop and realize you're killing somebody's daughter or somebody's child. And they got to answer for that. They don't think they do. <laughs> but they do. Mm -hmm. um, Lucina, if you, if you can get the PayPal account, we can put it in the OV chat window. Yeah, I'm putting, put it in there right now. Okay. Oh, and actually, sure I just got a note that over. said he posted the website. The, the website was posted. Yes. Okay. Make sure y'all give to Mama Gloria. Okay. You know, this, this is not how we treat our elders. This is not how we treat our transcestors. Um, so let this be a testament. You know, um, let's not sit back and watch uh, 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 this. And she's been so gracious enough to share her story. So, you know, share what you have. You know, you don't have to give every red cent you got, but give something. Give something from your heart as a love offering. Mm. And, you know, I feel like this is um, to encourage other trans women to tell their stories because um, it takes a lot for people to tell their story. And so yes. people are not celebrated for telling their stories. And so yes. uh, make sure we celebrate her and her PayPal. So give what you got. Give what you can give. Perfect. Yes, thank put that you. in the OV Lu chat. Lucina, thank you. a technical question here. Can this film be seen on Netflix or Amazon? Um, talk to us about that for those <laughs> who would like to. 
I would love for Netflix or Amazon to pick up the film. Um, we actually are going to uh, PBS uh, next year. So it will definitely be widely available uh, when it goes to PBS and that'll be in April. Um, uh, it will be making its premiere. I don't have a date yet, um, but prior to that, I'm sure we are going to be um, in some more festivals. Um, and if you live in Illinois, we just opened theatrically at the Gene Siskel Film Center. Um, so please, um, you know, keep checking the website, mamagloriafilm.com, uh, because we constantly post updates for how you can see the film. Uh, but yes, if you're an Illinois resident, you can stream it from your home uh, through their virtual cinema. And um, I'm sure we will have other opportunities coming up very soon um, in other parts of the country to be able to see the film before it makes its way to PBS next year. One audience member suggests the, the Trev Trevor Project is a source uh, of resource for LGBTQ children. Um, you're nodding your head. You want to comment about that, Lucina? Oh, yes. I mean, we, well, I, I know the uh, exec director of uh, the Trevor Project. I met him at um, uh, the uh, Time to Thrive conference where I met Shia for the first time in person too. Um, and uh, yes, I, I uh, they, they are doing amazing work um, for LGBTQ youth. Um, who um, are, have to leave their homes, who are on the street, um, you know, getting them um, a home. And um, so, yeah, they're a wonderful organization and we're hoping certainly to partner with them on the film. Yeah, so Trevor Lifeline. Um, ladies, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what a night, what a, what a story. Uh, I just, um, if I'm gushing, I own it. I think that this trinity of Gloria, Lucina, and Shia, what a force to be reckoned with. Three classy broads who are doing so much to make the world a better place. It is my honor to have gotten to know the three of you. Uh, Shia, want to promote your music? Um, I wanted to, um, you know, as an artist, I probably should always remove my music, but I would just want to take this, 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 this moment to, um, to just bask in meeting, finally meeting, uh, Mama Gloria, <laughs> although it's virtually, um, um, I got, I did have the, the, the honor of meeting, uh, Lucina, um, and Sandy. I want to thank y'all for, uh, providing this amazing conversation and, um, Definitely, definitely, definitely listen out for Presence of a Legend. Um, it is uh, an amazing song. Um, also, um, there are some Christmas things happening. <laughs> so, um, so I down, you know, I, I released two new songs for um, the movie uh, Happiest Season. Uh, that's Mrs. Claus and Blame It on Christmas. So for the season, make sure that y'all gather with y'all family, uh, those who may not be um, as knowledgeable about the queer community and invite them to watch the film mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and pray for the best because sometimes when people see things on TV, they, they say, oh, well, you know, this is an LGBT movie. Oh, and you know that woman who sing that, your favorite Christmas song? Oh yeah, she's a black trans woman. So you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I encourage people to go out there and to celebrate everything that we're doing within our community. Um, you know, we fought so hard to be out here and to be visible and vulnerable for our community in order for our community to learn and to thrive. Um, not just merely exist, but to thrive. And so celebrate everything that we all do. Uh, yes. What, what a way to end. Uh, Lucina, Gloria, and Shia, thank you so much for who you are and what you bring to the world. We're all a better, it is a better place, thanks to you, and we're all better people for having met and gotten to know you and continued joy and success in your lives. And, and thank, thank you so much. 
I adore you. Oh. <laughs> you, Sandy. Oh my goodness, this is a loving. <laughs> it is. We love you, Sandy. Thank oh well. You for, for oh, it's Sandy. totally. It's uh, it's my honor and pleasure. Much more joy in your lives, and thank you for bringing joy into our lives. I just want to end you. by reminding everybody that our next film is Advocate. It is being shown um, tomorrow at seven o'clock. You can get tickets up until an hour before the movie so come out and uh, see another great film and to all of you thank you and uh, good night good night, good night. Mm -hmm.